Good morning. Today is November 7th, and this is today's idea over coffee, which is brought to you over a couple of Folgers with almond milk. So, uh, one of the things that happened yesterday um, that I ended up using from the book Ideas Over Coffee um, was stringing wins together. So, idea number 60 is called String Wins Together. What it's pretty much saying is whenever you're really stopped with something, right, you just the brakes are on like you haven't started and it looks like there's no time soon that you're going to be starting every time you go to do whatever that thing is maybe it's making calls maybe it's starting your homework maybe it's um, getting to the gym putting on the shoes to go out to run like you're just totally stopped um, string wins together is when you know you really want to do the thing but at the same time you just you just can't bring it together so string wins together is doing really, really small things that turn into something bigger. So say it's going to the gym, right? If you're in that moment and you're like, I don't want to go to the gym, what's something really simple you could think about? Well, you could, uh, the whole intention of going to the gym is to make yourself healthier. So maybe go get a glass of water. And then next, you look to see uh, how long the travel is and then you look to see if it's cold out. So you know you're gonna have to go outside to get in your car and go, so you decide, all right, this one I'm gonna wear. And then next you say, all right, I'll, I'll go put on my shoes, or I'll go change. And you, you just keep doing small things. So yesterday, um, one of the things I was thinking about um, is, you know, I really wanna get my book out to people, and I have this consistent internal mental battle you know, thinking that my work is kind of worthless. And I know it's not true. I, I know the, logic, the logical part of my brain gets that. Um, but the emotional part of my brain is really not, it's not ready for that, right? You know, sometimes we have these, these conceptions about ourselves that we suck or, you know, there's something wrong with us. So one of the things for me is often um, judging my own work, right? So I often just think like, you know, this is not something that's valuable. It will not help people. You know, it's a waste of their fifteen dollars, and uh, the the problem with that is then I don't go out and tell people about it. I don't even bring it up in conversations when that's going on inside. So, what I've been thinking about is, you know, I, I would love to sell more copies. I mean, one of the original goals behind me writing the book was that I wanted I wanted a more fun way to help decrease some of my debt. Right, I have quite a few college loans and I'm trying to decrease that by doing something fun, by writing a book, by doing something that will help people instead of just finding another crappy $10 an hour job <laughs> that'll take up a bunch of my time and I won't necessarily learn anything. So um, what I wanted to do was call up my friends and family and ask if they wanted to buy copies. And um, you know, there's this part of me that's like, no, you're like, you're just trying to take their money, you're, it's a sales pitch, like, well, who do you think you are? And I thought to myself, you know, there's got to be another side of this coin. And I thought, all right, if I had a friend or a family member that had finished writing a book, would I want them to call me and ask if I wanted to buy one? And I thought to myself, well, especially like if it became a bestseller, I would absolutely want a chance to, to buy one before it became a bestseller. So I started calling people. Well, first, I, I, I needed that mental block to, I needed to figure out what was stopping me. Cause for it, first, it was just this emotional, like, feeling in my chest, like, oh, I do not want to call people. I don't want to sell them something. I don't want to try to take their money. And then I, I thought about the reality of it and thought about what the actual fear was. And I, I realized that. It's just that I think that the book is worth this one. In fact, I know that it's super helpful. Um, I've talked to plenty of people that have actually told me that they got something out of it. I look through my phone book and I look for who's the most comfortable person that I'd love to talk to. Maybe I've even talked to recently. Just get on the phone with somebody or something about something, right? So I just called one of my friends that I haven't talked to in a while that I've been meaning to call anyway. And then from there, I just, all of a sudden, it was so much easier to call people. And that was like an example of string wins together. First, thinking about what was stopping me. Um, second, looking at who's someone easy I could contact. That when I say easy, like emotionally easy, 
um, someone that's really easy going, maybe they already have the book or something, and then start calling the other people that for, for whatever reason I might be more uncomfortable calling. So that's how I use one of the ideas from the book today, uh, sorry, yesterday, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe. I'm going to keep up bringing ideas over coffee to you every morning. And uh, I look forward to hearing some feedback. If you are an owner of the book, please let me know uh, if, if there's one of the concepts or one of the chapters that, that don't make sense to you, how to apply. Um, put it in the comments so then I can use it and tell you how to use it. Stay weird.